Coach Rulani there so content with the 1 0 win for Mamelo the Sundowns against Al Akli. Now we've got joining us all the way from Alexandra, Egypt, uh, Ahmed Al Ramadi. Thank you so much, Ahmed, for joining us on the show today. Thank you. All right, it's been an encounter, they say, an expected one in that encounter between Sundowns and um, Al Akli. But um, Sundowns appeared in control until the end with Pesitao unsuccessfully arguing for a penalty following that tackle in the box. Do you think the penalty should have been given? Maybe it would have had a draw in the first leg. I think it's a bit, a bit soft, but uh, as you just mentioned earlier, it's, uh, you know that this game, you'd have goals. It's an, it's an instant classic. If you go back to the, to, the, to the recent fixtures in the Champions League, you know that there are, there are goals shared between both sides. But yesterday's game had a different had a different dynamic because I think Sundowns having the home advantage, they pressed early on in the game. Al-Ahli, while they had this reserved attitude in the first half, they did succeed in, keep it, in keeping Sundowns at bay in the opening 45 minutes. But then again, in the second half, it's, uh, they lacked some courage. They needed to be brave going forward, but we didn't really see much of Al-Ahli in, 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 uh, in the third, in the attacking third where we would have hoped that the likes of Percy Tao or Salah Mohsin or, or even Reda Slim, the Moroccan who arrived in the summer, they would have some sort of impact, which unfortunately they didn't. And the head coach, Marcel Kohler, actually expressed his frustration after the game, where he mentioned that um, that his side needed to be much calm in possession. They gave away the ball so cheaply at times. And and they and at the end of the day, it's, it's a fair result, given... The complexion, but Al Ali are still are still in it. The game is still in the balance, and we have a huge game in Cairo next week. The last two games Sundowns played in Cairo ended in a draw and a win, and they have not been able um, to get the hold of um, Al Ali, especially at home. But let's look at um, this. Do you share some reservations looking at the goal um, conceded by Al Ali of recent in this competition? Yeah, they have now conceded. Uh, yesterday's goal was actually their fourth in the competition. They're, again, they're, they're conceding goals in the same manner uh, every game. They, they give away the ball and then they, they get attacked on the counter or on the break. So that's, that's some of the problems that Marcel Collar has been or the head coach has been discussing in recent weeks. They're trying to find solutions for them. And again, it's still early on in the season, so you can expect these kind of errors. Um, in, in, we're in November now, or we're nearly in November. Again, uh, this team usually hits top form around January time. And, and again, we've, we've seen also teams in Europe have, have this much inconsistency at the start. So this, this is just normal. Um, again, next week, they have a huge game on, the, on, on this Wednesday. They, they'll have the home support as well with, with, 50 or 40 or 50,000 at home. And uh, again, that's that's also important because the, the Sundowns head coach also mentioned or he stressed on the importance of having the, the home support to push them forward. And again, I think that's what Al Ahli needs in the second leg. Okay, let's talk about Al Ahli goalkeeper. We cannot talk about them conceding without bringing El Shanawi to the fore. He seems to have proved that his weakness are long range shots. Do you share the same reservations looking at the goal he conceded against Mamelodi Sundowns? I don't think that long shots are his weakness. Um, El is a is a great goalkeeper. First of all, he's he's helped Ali win multiple Champions League titles in in the last three or four years. But um, one of his main weaknesses is actually not long shots. It's it's the fact that. Uh, with, with with aerial balls where, where where he comes out too early or he doesn't get, get a hold of it somehow so so that's an area where he needs to improve but but yesterday's goal i th i don't think he was at fault i think the 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 player who's who's Marwan Atea who's dispossessed at the edge of the box and that's that's what Marcel Collard he was he was angry at the press conference when when he mentioned that the player was he, he gave away the ball so so easily so that's that's what they need to work on so i i don't think it was the goalkeeper's fault if Al Ali do not get the job done in Cairo and pick the ticket to the finals of the Africa Football League, do you see this being enough reason to call for the coach ahead, Coach Collar's head? No, definitely not. I, I don't think anyone's anyone's having that talk at the moment. He, he's won them the Champions League. There's, they still have the FIFA Club World Cup. 
And um, again, they're treating this tournament seriously. Every club, are, every club is treating this tournament seriously. We've also seen with that and Esperance yesterday. So again, in terms of Marcel Collar's stay at Al Ahli, I don't think that's that's ever in doubt or jeopardy at the moment. Problem dated back to the game against um, Simba SC. We saw the way um, they drew. Uh, against Simba, they narrowly made it to the semi-final against um, the Melody Sundowns. Will you say they've got a scoring problem? Petital has not been at his best. Even being a South African who has played for Melody Sundowns, he has not been his best at Al Akli giving them the goals. Do they have a goal scoring problem? I would say so at the moment because if if you look at the recruitment in the summer, they've they've spent big money. Not on the transfer because they signed him on a free transfer, but in in terms of the salary, they're paying big for uh, for, for for this French striker Anthony Modest, who arrived on a free transfer. He was recently at Borussia Dortmund in Germany, but again, he's 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 thirty five years old, and we we haven't seen much of him in terms of uh, goal scoring prowess in recent years. He had one good season at FC Köln, and he had. I don't think he will be able to replicate his form in Egypt. It's it's a different style. The African football is is much much different than uh, than than European football. So I don't think they've they've done right in recruitment. I still do think they need another forward in January, and hopefully hopefully in two months' time we we can have this conversation again. But but they will have signed another centre forward, I believe. We'll be hoping in two months' time we, we have this conversation once again, Ahmed. Now, how confident are you that Al Akli will make it to the final? And who do you think are the two teams that will make it to the final of the African Football League? I think Al Akli still have a good chance. Uh, with the home support in Cairo is, is going to be incredible. We've we've seen Al Akli turn turn the tide before uh, on, on multiple occasions in Africa, and I don't think this will be any different. It will be it will be tough. It won't be easy, but I think they're they're still capable of doing it. And for the other game, I I think that will will make it through. They're, they're obviously the stronger side, and in the last two years, they, they they've shown that. Okay, we'll be waiting to know if it's going to be a North African derby for the Africa Football League. Thank you so much, Ahmed Al Ramadi, from um, Alexandria, you. Egypt, for joining us on the show today. Mm -hmm.